So we're talking about habits here, um, and we're going to talk about today the getting a little bit more specific about your habits um, that you're trying to form. Okay, so my name is Deb Blum, and um, I am a self-love and authenticity coach. I'm the host of this particular YouTube channel right here that you are listening to this video on, and I am excited to be talking about habits. Um, as I said in the first uh, episode, this is a series that I'm creating of short videos to talk about habits. I am not an expert at habits, but I am really kind of trying to give to you some of the things that I've learned about habit formation and some of the things that I understand. It doesn't mean that I'm an, um, that I'm always uh, great at sticking to my habits either because um, habit formation can be really hard. But as I said in the first episode, the first video, you know, habits are actually something that we're really good at. You think that you're not good at that then because you have seen yourself try to bring intentional um, habit creation into place and then not getting it done. And so totally sympathize with that, but we are actually good at creating habits. And so let's just own that we're good at it. In the second episode, I talked about the importance of being able to have something bigger than the habit that you're that you're working towards. So, like, just kind of putting a habit in place for with no real connection to a larger vision for your life is probably actually not going to work that well. You really do need to feel motivated because often the habits that we're trying to form, um, if if they were easy, we wouldn't be having this conversation right now, right? Like, if it was. I want to have a habit of eating chocolate every single night before I go to bed, or I want to have a habit of eating ice cream every night before we go to bed, you know that that's an easy habit for you to form because the dopamine hit is going to be there because you're going to get pleasure and it's just going to get rewarded and you're going to be excited about it. So habits that bring us great pleasure can be formed super simply. But here's the thing, if you take a bigger vision and you build habits in to support that bigger vision, then the pleasure reward cycle can actually be implemented because you actually know you're so proud of yourself. You're so excited. You're so excited to be moving toward that thing. So it's worth it. Like say, let's just say for example, like you're trying to build, um, you're trying to uh, build a build a business or something like that. And so you know that you have to do certain things in order to be able to do that. Well, um, every time that you, do those things that are important. Let's say it's like put your phone down and spend one hour doing actual deep work. Then when you're done, you feel so good about yourself. But in the beginning, when you think about doing that hour's worth of work, you might have that like, oh my gosh, but I have all these competing priorities and I really don't feel like it. And I'd really like to just kind of muck around on Facebook. And um, But we know afterwards we feel really good. And we also know that in the long run, we will be creating something that's really important to us. Same thing with exercise. You know, often exercise is one of those things where, you know, there's a part of you that wants to do it. And we're going to talk about parts in a little, in a, a future um, episode that there's a part of you that really wants to do it. And there's a part of you that really doesn't feel like doing it. So we start to have to have these dialogues with these parts, but we have to remember that there's also a, lo a longer term vision that we're trying to, to do this. We aren't often, and so some people exercise, they just totally love it. Some people, don't like getting into exercise, but when they're doing it, they love it. Most people love it the way they feel afterwards, and they like that it provides them the ability to be able to live a healthy life. Maybe it provides the ability for them to do other activities they really like. Like, for example, a lot of the reasons why I exercise is because I want to be able to climb hills with my mountain bike without so much torture. <laughs> so it's really worth it for me to be doing work in exercises during you know the days I'm not biking so that I'm stronger and more capable and I have more core strength and and I have more cardiovascular ability so I can get up those hills so it gives you and and by the way why do I like to get up the hills because I love the downhills <laughs> but I also love feeling healthy and feeling strong and I want to be healthy and strong for my children and my grandchildren and my husband and my future dreams for my life so we see that if you if you plan these this bigger vision our habits are easier to create so what do we have to do Oh, hello, there's a phone ringing. Um, so what do we have to do? We have to be able to create the specific habits that are in support of the bigger visions. And I encourage people to be pretty small. Now, if you look up SMART goals, we know that they want we want our goals to be, um, I can't even remember what they are, but you can look it up. But basically, we want them to be, um, I think, like, you know, small enough that they can be achieved, measurable, 
we need to be able to track them. So we can't just say, I want to build a business, or we can't just say, I want to raise great children, or can't just say, I want to be healthy. We have to back into that and see, well, what kinds of things does a person who does these who, who does these things and achieves these things, what do they do? So you might even have to ask around, like, hey, to a person you see who's really successful, what have you done? Or you might just know really, really clearly what you need to do. Maybe it is get off your phone as much. Maybe it's that you need to drink more. You notice that you're just like dehydrated and you um, and, and you get headaches at the end of the day and you're like, it's so easy for you. I just want no more headaches at the end of the day, so I'm gonna drink water every day. That is a really, really great thing to do. So it also might be that you have to say no to more things. Like one of the most important habits that we can create is the habit of discernment, the habit of being able to, when somebody asks us to do, asks us to do something that we can say, is that really in alignment with my bigger goals? Is it really something that I can take on it, when I consider all of the other things I'm doing? So it's the, the habit of pausing before you say yes. Um, because what we know is that we'll have, like we may have a tendency to want to make another person happy, not say no, be a people pleaser, right? We have all these things we want to, um, that are competing with us. And the dopamine hit of people pleasing can be really strong. So we have to then know, okay, we know I'm trying to form a habit, which is that I'm discerning and I don't say yes. Like I had to go through and build this muscle of when someone would ask me to do something like volunteering in the kid's school or even activities, I would have to say, Say, I'm going to get back to you later on tonight because that would give me the space to be able to think about it and it would I would be able to go in and talk to my people pleaser side of me and say are we sure we want to do this can we really take this on because you know we don't want to regret this afterwards so you see where I'm going with this so we have to take the bigger vision of our lives and then when we and when we look at the bigger vision of our lives we build in habits that are in support of that so we're going to talk more about how to be more specific a little bit later but this particular thing is just to get your kind of your um wheels turning in your brain, and what are some of the specific things you can be doing, and how can you get them to be kind of concrete things, and I would encourage you to not take on big, huge things in the beginning, like one thing that's in support of it, that you feel that you can be putting your energy and focus toward, and building that groove in your brain, that one that ultimately creates the brain's own desire to keep repeating itself because you've been repeating itself, so then it tries to create the pathway to make it easy to, to do that thing in your life. We want to make the habits become as easy as waking up in the morning or easy as going to bed at night or driving a car or eating ice cream. I'm not so sure it'll ever be that easy, but you know where I'm going. All right. Thanks. We'll see you in the next one. Oh, in the next one, um, I think we're going to be talking about, yes, we're going to talk about um, what's possible.